Hello everybody and welcome to today's lesson, Oil Painting for Beginners. Today we're going to be looking into an introduction to traditional oil paints and I'm just going to be touching on little things that you might need to know before you dive into the world of oils. But first, a little bit about me and my background. So my name is Katie and I'm an artist living in the UK. I work primarily in oils because they are my favourite medium to work with. So the reason why I love oils so much is that the colours just seem so much more vibrant than other materials. The texture is buttery and creamy, which is really beautiful to work with. And the fact that they take a lot longer to dry means that you have so much more options and you can manoeuvre the paint in the way that you want to. So I am a working artist, so I do sell my work, my originals and prints as well from my websites. And I also have a YouTube channel where I love to show the process behind my artworks and I love to share little tips and tricks with people that really want to learn more about painting. I want people to discover painting as an outlet for themselves because I really believe that creating is such a huge part of self-development and improving mental health. So in this class, we're going to be looking at traditional oils and water mixable oils, how to use them, and we're going to create some artwork together. Most of all, I want you to experiment to gain confidence with painting oils and enjoy it and have fun because that's what it's all about. So let's talk about what supplies you might need for traditional oils. So first and foremost, and maybe the most obvious one, and that is that you need your oil paint. So I'm going to be using the Dowler Rowney Georgian Oil, and I've also made a swatch list. Now this is something I really recommend you doing. It doesn't matter whether you have two or three colours, you don't have to have this many colours. But creating a swatch list is something really important for colour mixing and we'll go into that a little bit more later. But it just helps you uh, realise the sort of pigment that you're wanting to work with and then you can choose it accordingly. So for instance, if you're choosing a green, you can see if you want more of a, a lemon green colour or more of a blue green colour. So this is why swatch lists are really great. And that is one of the exercises that I would really love for you to complete uh, before the next lesson. So it's a great way to get stuck in with the oil paints, but we'll go more into that later. So let's go into oil painting additives like mediums and thinners. Additives are just something that you add to the paint, that's as simple as what it is. Most oil painters will use some sort of medium and thinner with their paint. There's a lot out there to choose from, but first of all let's talk about thinners. So I'm going to be using this low odour thinner. Um, anything like a solvent or turpentine or thinners, they all essentially do the same thing so you can choose which one appeals to you. I'm using the low odour thinner because um, I suffer from asthma myself and things like turpentine can be quite heavy on the lungs. So it's great to use good ventilation if you can, maybe crack a window open or something like that. A thinner is used to literally thin the paint out. So this might be when you want really uh, like watery paint to work with so it's easier and you can also use it for cleaning brushes as well. Now there are lots of mediums to choose from. Just an example of this is a purified linseed oil but there are things like poppy oil and stand oil. You can also get quick drying linseed oil. Things like the oils like linseed oil, poppy oil, they keep the paint fat whereas using a thinner will thin out the paint. So we'll go a bit more into that later. Um, but you definitely will need a thinner to work with oils. The mediums, that's totally up to you. Personally, I think as a beginner, it's maybe easier to start out with just a thinner for now, and then maybe move on to mediums the more confidence you get. So let's talk about brushes next. There are lots of brushes to choose from. Um, feel free to experiment with brushes because it is definitely down to personal preference. If you like the look of quite thick um, brush strokes where you can very visibly see a brush stroke, I would probably recommend the more stiffer brushes. So literally you just sort of see the tension when you put your hand on it. If it's quite um, stiff and tough, they are the ones that's going to give you a really clean brush stroke. Uh, the softer ones which you can literally like feel like very, very soft. These are the ones that will create a really nice soft blend. So if you don't really wanna see the brush strokes, you just wanna see lots of blends 
and lots of, of fine layers and detail, then maybe the soft ones are better for you. So it is a personal preference. If you can, I would definitely try a little bit of both if you can, because it is just down to whatever you prefer to work with. So let's talk painting surfaces. When using oils, it's really important to make sure that the surface that you're gonna be painting on has been primed, usually with an acrylic gesso or something like that. So most painting panels and canvases that you buy will be pre-primed, um, but just check, it will usually say on the label that it's been primed and it's ready for oil. The reason for this is oil can soak into the layers and eat away at the fibers, so it does affect the longevity of your painting. And something that I discovered not that long ago were these amazing oil painting pads that are like sketchbooks, like paper, but it is oil painting paper, so it's ready for oil that you can use. And that's absolutely fantastic because it's a great way to get your practice in and have a little go with the paint without having to use a canvas. So these are absolutely amazing and I really love working with these. I would definitely recommend getting some oil painting paper to do your swatch list. And also we're gonna be making a color wheel. Like you can see here, this was a little sketch that I did on the paper before working with the canvas. So it's a great way to practice your painting before you go onto the real thing. So let's talk about some oil painting techniques. The number one technique or rule that oil painters love to talk about is the fat over lean rule. <sighs> what is that? <laughs> I spent a long time not actually having a clue what that really meant. So I'm gonna try and break it down for you today. Please don't panic if this sounds too technical and I don't want it to put you off because at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. There are new rules to painting and just having fun is the main thing. And this is definitely something that you will understand more and more as you paint and as you become a painter. So definitely don't stress out too much about it, but I will try and explain the fat over lean rule as best I can. So we've already touched on it a little bit. We've talked about different additives that you can add to the paint. Um, basically, the additives can fall into two different categories, solvents and oils. So your solvents are, again, like we said, your thinners, turpentine, and the oils are like your linseed oil, any poppy oil. Solvents thin the paint out, which makes it dry really fast because it's thinned it out. There's not a lot there. Mediums like poppy oil or linseed oil, these are fat because they keep lots of oil in the mixture, which then makes it take a lot longer to dry. Now there is a little exception to this rule, which does add a bit of confusion. <laughs> there are fast drying mediums, so fast drying oils. So you can get a fast drying linseed oil, which of course would be the exception because that is an oil, so it keeps it fat, but it does dry faster because it's been designed that way chemically. So those would be the exceptions. So when oil painting, you want the first layers, so the first layers that you put down, you want those to be lean and thin because they can dry fast, they can cure fast. And then you want your top layers, so those either whether it's thick impasto layers or the layers that sit on top when you're finishing your artwork, you want those to be fat. So you want those to be more slow drying and full of oil. So a way to do this is for the first few layers to use more of the thinner, more of the solvents, and then for the latter layers to use more oils, either straight from the tube or to add a medium like the linseed oil or the poppy oil. Personally, at the moment, I'm really enjoying just using a solvent for the first few layers and then going in with oil pretty much straight from the tube. When oil paint is drying or curing, it actually moves around a little bit. So the reason for this technique is that if the first layers are really fat with oil, which means that they're very slow drying, and then the top layer is very thin and it's very fast drying, what happens is the top layer dries super fast so that's, it's almost like a hard layer now. And then the bottom layer, it's almost moving around as it's drying and curing, which then causes the top layer to crack a little bit like a little mini earthquake. <laughs> you know, when you see the cracked ground when it's so dry, that's sort of like the impact that it will have on your painting eventually. You know, this won't happen straight away. This will happen when the whole painting is dry, which can take up to six months or even sometimes a year 
depending on the colours that you've used and things. So that is the Fat Over Lean rule. I hope that has kind of explained it a little bit for you. So let's move on to blending. One of the main reasons I love oil paints is because they are slow drying, they are amazing at blending, which you can use your brush with a sideways motion. And definitely a softer brush works really well when blending out if you want a really soft, fine blend. A, a really soft, big brush is gonna do that the best for you. Also a little technique that I like to use for blending is to go across in a zigzag motion and then go forward and back, forward and back again. And that really just moves the paint around and creates a beautiful soft blend. Impasto is an oil painting technique where you can add on really thick texture using either a palette knife or really bold brush strokes. It's where you can see the paint and when it dries it becomes very tactile and it, rather than looking like a smooth canvas, you can see all this paint on top of it and it really adds like a 3D effect. If you like the look of impasto paintings, then I would go for a thick oil paint and maybe using a palette knife and definitely a stiffer brush. Another thing to remember with oil painting is that some pigments are stronger than others. So you might only take a little bit of paint, but it goes a really long way and others you might feel like you might need a little bit more. So it really depends on the colour. The stronger pigments are colours uh, like the Prussian blues and very intense colours and, and the reds as well. So it's a really good idea to mix small amounts of paint when you're colour mixing. Um, to start off with, try and find the colour that you're looking for. And then once you have, you can go in with a larger amount. So the most common shapes for brushes for oil painting are round, filbert, flat and bright. I use a mixture of all of these in my painting. I specifically like flat and filbert brushes, um, but again it's down to personal preference, whatever you prefer. The best thing to do is have a little experiment with a few on some of your sketchbook paper and see what you like working with the best. If you like very detailed work then maybe a round one is best for you. And if you like impressionistic style with bold brush strokes, then maybe go for a flat or a filbert. They also come in lots of different sizes. If you've got a large area, then a big brush is better because you can cover more ground with it. And smaller brushes are great for the later stages of the painting where you're adding detail. There are a number of different brush strokes you can use with each brush and each size. This is definitely something that will come organically the more you paint. At first, these things might feel a little bit awkward, um, but in time, it's something that will just come totally naturally to you. So let's talk about colour, my favourite subject. <laughs> Using a colour wheel is really key to painting with colour. Uh, when I first started out mixing colours, it would kind of just be a haphazard guess and I'd add a bit of that and I'd add a bit of this and just kind of hope for the right outcome. And I'd end up wasting so much paint, just getting more and more frustrated and feeling like, a failure. Uh, but since I started using the colour wheel and tried to educate myself a little bit more on colour and colour theory, it's actually become a lot easier for me now and something that's starting to feel a little bit more natural. Uh, there are tons of videos online and articles about colour theory and so just take a little bit of time diving into that, that's a whole subject on its own for sure. Um, but definitely creating a colour wheel is something that I think would be a great practice. I'm not a colour expert, but you don't need to be when making a colour wheel. You can even make it with three colours if that's all you have. So let's make our own together. So to begin with, we're going to be using a bowl or something circular to create a circle. And make sure you're using oil painting paper or a primed surface. First we're going to be starting with the three primary colours which are yellow, red and blue. So feel free to use whichever ones you have available to you. Next we're going to be painting in the secondary colours which are orange, violet and green. If you only have primary colours you can mix these together to create the secondary colours. Or if you have these paint colours available feel free to use them. Last, we're going to mix the tertiary colours by mixing the colour either side of the segment to create the one in between. Mm -hmm. 
Colour wheels are great for colour mixing and they also can be a guide on how to dull down the intensity of colours by using a complement colour. For example, if you mix orange and blue together it will result in a greyed out colour and the same goes for red and green and yellow and purple. So these are really helpful and it's a great idea for an exercise to have a little practice mixing colours and experimenting in your oil sketch pad. So when sketching out your painting you might reach for the pencil just out of habit, but actually using thinned out oil paint is the perfect way to sketch. It can help you decide on composition and help you to start to block in where you want to put things. You can even delete bits if you need to just with getting a little bit of thinner and just painting that around a little bit and you can erase bits. Um, it's much easier to use than a pencil and rubber and instead of adding grubbiness to your painting like a pencil might, it will actually add to the richness and the colour of your painting because you've basically got another layer of colour there. So let's talk clean up. Clean up is actually easier than you might think with oils. If you're wanting to do more painting that night or even the next day, you can actually just leave out your brushes and your oil paint because they have such long drying times that they'll be absolutely fine to leave and then come back to. If it's going to be more than a day or so, I would recommend using some solvent to get as most of the paint off as you can and dabbing it on a paper towel. And then I personally just use a little bit of soap and water to get off the rest. You can also use oils as well, like a, a linseed or a poppy oil that will keep your brushes in really nice condition. This is one of the reasons why I love using a glass palette because once the oil paint has dried on there, you can just scrape it off and you have a clean palette ready to start again. Disposable palettes are really easy and I'll be using one for today's video. Um, obviously they are not waste free, which is the negative about them, but they are easy to use, especially for beginners. One thing is to be super careful with oils because if they do get in your clothes or the carpet, then it's possible that they will ruin it. So just be careful with getting it everywhere. <laughs> Maybe put some protective measures down first. If you do get it on your clothes or carpet, you can just dab it with a bit of solvent till it comes out and then pop it straight in the wash and you know, it might be okay. So they are all the basics that you need to know about oil painting. As I said earlier, having fun and having a go and experimenting is what's most important. So try and view these sessions as practice and not to put too much pressure on it. Maybe have a go at the exercises that we've talked about today. You know, get the oil paints out, have a little play with the colours, maybe try out some different brush strokes and just try and get a little bit of a feeling for the paint and how it works. You can even try painting something, you know, just have a free painting session without worrying about the outcome. And I'll see you in the next lesson where we'll create this beautiful floral painting together.